One, two, one, two, three. Oh, oh. shout we cry with a shout we cry open wide heaven's gate let your glory fill this place here we stand in awe here we stand in awe lift it high every heart giving you every part As we're reaching for your throne, there's an anthem, hear it rising, with a shout we cry, with a shout we cry, open wide heaven's gate, let your glory fill this place, God, come on, invite him down this morning. There's nothing like your presence, God. There's nothing like your presence, God. There's nothing like your presence, God. Open wide heaven's gate, let your We are very blessed this morning to have with us a guest drummer. Would you guys please give a nice living faith welcome to Mr. Danny Wilson. What a blessing he is to us this morning. I was telling the first service that if you guys are a news junkie like I am, you guys know what's going on in the Middle East and there's just a lot of madness going around and we lift our prayers up to the family of the ambassador of Libya who was assassinated along with the other four Americans two were seals and the Bible says that stuff like this is going to happen so we were not to be surprised but I'm asking God for to teach us how to pray because I believe right right now where they don't have any the world doesn't care about the church in general but in the end the church is going to be the rock the foundation that everybody's going to be flooding to so I'm asking God to, 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 to strengthen us, to put it in your heart how we're going to be able to receive all these people that are going to be coming into the church looking for help and looking for Jesus. 
And so that is our prayer that we would be able to be there to minister because we have a God that gives us first, second, third chances. He never says no. As long as you call upon him, he will come. Amen. He never lets go. Play me happy, Danny. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near. I will fear no evil, for my God is with me. And if my God is with me, whom then shall I? Coming for the heart that holds on, a glorious light beyond all compare. And there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, we'll live to know you here on the earth. And I will fear no evil, for my God is with. You never let go, every high and every low, oh no. You never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you. mountain one day they nailed him to die on a tree suffering anguish despised and rejected bearing our sins my redeemer is he hands that heal nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for me cause living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he just 
fight freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. Sing it, Dina. since far away rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glorious day oh glorious day glorious day oh glorious day Let me drink from the living water, bring it life to my very core. In the midst of my desperation, Jesus. When I'm dry, running on empty flow, your streams of life through me, you're the life giving water.
three and come, come, come to the river. You are the living water. Wash me clean. Wash me, wash me clean, Lord. Come, come, come to the river. You are the living water. Flow through me. Wash me clean. Take it home. Oh, how he loves us. 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 Oh, how he loves us.
That's what he wants. That's what. Everybody stand up. Sure. How many know Jesus is wonderful? All right. Come on. Oh! I don't need a whole lot of money. I don't need a big fine car. I got everything that a man could want. I got more than I could ask for. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness to know that I'm talking about my Jesus? Some kind of wonderful king of kings is some kind of wonderful ancient of days is some kind of wonderful my Jesus is some kind of one two three and he's some kind. And by the way, thank you, Lacey. Oh! What a great, what a great ministry of music. And uh, also for all the technicians of our church putting all this together for us, it's just fantastic. Thank you very much. Amen and amen. Been talking about revival. I want to finish up. This is part three of a three parts uh, series. It's perfect for Back to Church Sunday. It's good to have everybody here. And we're coming to a time where we need to make our mind up. Are we going to keep, you know, what were they doing at the foot of the cross? Here, Jesus is on the cross, he is shedding his blood. He, he's, he's making that ultimate sacrifice. And what were they doing at the foot of the cross? The soldiers and stuff, they were playing games. Casting lots, who's going to get his robe? And this, they were playing games. And we don't come to church to play games. We, we come to church to worship the one and true living God, and his name is Jesus. Did y'all bring your white hankies? Come on. Where are they? Get them out. Now, listen, if you, it's fine with me while I'm preaching. If you want to run back to the back, there's two baskets on either table in the back. They're full of anointed hankies. Go get yourself one and get it out and ready to use. Here's one right here for me. Amen. And we're... You know, the premise here is that they waved palm branches there when Jesus came into Jerusalem. They, they cut down palm branches and they waved them before of the Lord as a praise offering. Well, there are no palm trees on Coyote Springs Road, ladies and gentlemen. So we're using hankies right from the book of Acts chapter 19. Give the Lord a good wave offering. Use your hands if you don't have a hanky. Come on, somebody. A wave to the Lord in praise. Amen. 
We got another white out service going here. You all, you all crazy for Jesus. You know that? Praise the Lord. Let's look at Psalm 85, 6 as we conclude this series entitled Revival. How many know we need revival? We talked about what revival was. It, it means to uh, do again. It means to relive, to reprosper, to renew, to restore, and to return. And that is the call God is giving out to his people through his prophets, through those that uh, actually hear his voice. It's it's, look, get ready. He's coming, saints. He's coming for his bride. And we need to clean up uh, our acts before God and return to him and be restored by him and to reprosper. How many need to reprosper? I mean, because of certain things, because don't blame it on the economy. Don't you dare blame things on the economy. Look, God says, I will take care of my people. And now my God shall supply all of your need. Not the government, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Who's your supplier? Jesus. God Almighty, he's your supplier. He is Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides for us. Amen. So let's talk about revival again. We need revival in our country, revival in our church, revival in our families, revival in our schools. We need a fresh touch. We need a fresh outpouring. We need a rekindling. We need to get re-energized and fired up again for the Lord. Become passionate for the gospel once again. Some of you might say, oh, I am passionate for the gospel. Good for you. But many others aren't. That's why... The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, Awake! Awake, O church! Arise, for your redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> anybody here ever sleepwalk? That's what the Bible refers to as a lot, a lot of the church people. They're just sleepwalking. I used to sleepwalk, man, when I was a little kid. I, don't ask me how that happens. I don't know. You just found myself outside my house knocking on my front door. It, let me in, let me in. How do I get out of here? You know, that's scary, you know. Hallelujah. Let's look at Psalm 85, 6, please. Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Here the psalmist is crying out. It should be our cry. Lord, revive us again. Revive us again. That tells me they were walking with the Lord. Something happened, and now they need to be revived, restored. They need to return, to reprosper, to relive again. And the psalmist is crying out, and this is thousands of years ago. It should be our cry today. Will you not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? And remember last week I told you one of the red flags of knowing you need revival is that your life becomes void of rejoicing in the Lord. Your life becomes void of praise. You need revival. You're a candidate for revival. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 7, and I'm going to give you the keys. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14, please. Here God is calling his people in a mighty way and gives us the keys to revival. He wants to do it, but God responds to your action. Did you know that? He responds to your action. The Bible says, draw nigh to me, and I will draw nigh to you. The Bible says, call upon me, and then God says, I will answer you. You see how that works? So God reacts to our, react, to, to our action. Here he's calling his people to action so God can move. All right, Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I like the part B, the second half. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. How many know that we need our land healed? From sea to shining sea, we need the church church house healed. We need the white house healed. We need the schoolhouse healed. We need the farmhouse healed. We need healing. And here, I like the second half, but in order to get the then, 
the then, then we have to do something above it. And it says, if my people. So this is being addressed to who? God's people. Not any people, but God's people, which are called by the church, which are called by my name. And whose name might that be? The name of Jesus. Now, we talked about this in the last two weeks, so it's all on CD. You can get it. I'm just recapping quickly because I don't have much time. If my people which are called by my name shall, number one, first step we talked about last week, shall humble themselves. Nothing happens with God until he sees humility in you, in his church, in his people. That if we humble ourselves before God, then we have God's attention. What does the word humble mean? It means to be void of pride. It means to be aware of one's littleness and God's vastness. Oh, I like that. And to be in subjection to. 1 Peter 5, 6 says this. 1 Peter 5, 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So that's where we need to be, under his mighty hand in humility. Because when that happens, then God will exalt you in due time. To exalt means to lift up, to prosper, to honor, to anoint. But the humility must come first. The humbling, you must get, you must get down before you can get up. Well, I want to go up another level. Well, you've got to get down. And the word literally means to get down. Say, turn to somebody and say, get down. Get down. Oh! I, I know, I know. Sky, forget it. I don't got it. I like that Lutheran pastor up there doing, the, doing his thing, though. That was kind of neat. Yeah, should have been. Amen. So if we humble ourselves under his mighty hand, he will exalt you in due time. He will exalt us when he's ready to do so at the perfect timing. God is getting ready to exalt his church, but we must humble ourselves under his mighty hand. And what better place to be than under his hand? Hallelujah. And I got good news for somebody here talking about the hand of God. The Bible says no one, nothing can pluck you out of the Father's hand. Did you hear that? Some of you that might be thinking, I think God's let go of me. He hasn't let go of you. See, you've let go of him, but he's still got a hold of you. See, you might say, I give up, but he's got you in a bear hug. He's got you. No one can pluck you out of him. His hand. Man, that's security. I like that. Now, we talked about humility and how it plays into it's the key role of revival. It's the key to anything with God. It begins with humility, including salvation. A person full of pride will not call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. It takes humility. It takes somebody humble in heart to say, Jesus, I'm a mess up. Save me. Forgive me. That word can't come out of some people's mouth. I mean, they talk around it. They can't say, I'm sorry or forgive me for nothing. But you better get used to it. Because that's what it takes to get saved. Lord, forgive me my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness through your precious blood. That's humility. Hallelujah. Now, let's look. Let's look at this now. Let's look at the second key. This is the new stuff. I got to hurry. Second Chronicles 7.14 again, Daniel. And Daniel, if you could stay right with me, I need to go right through this. Second Chronicles 7.14. Go ahead, Kyle. One more time. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. That's key number one. And pray. That's key number two. And pray. Look at Psalm 10.17. Didn't Jesus said, my father's house should be called a house of prayer? So shouldn't prayer be going on in God's house? <laughs> hmm? I've had people, why do you pray so much? Well, what's supposed to be going on in God's house? 
You know, I can only have so many potlucks before I just get out right up to here with it, you know. We need to pray. Nothing happens until God's people pray. Nothing. Absolutely not. Say absolutely. Nothing happens until we pray. You pray, God responds. You pray, heaven opens. You pray, angels released. You pray, mountains moved. The power and effectiveness of prayer. The Bible says, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It's powerful and effective. Let's read this, Psalm 1017, please. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. Isn't this wonderful? It says that the prayer of the humble heart will be heard of God. What kind of prayer? I always thought it was the prayer of faith. Well, yeah, but first comes humility. It's the prayer of a humble heart that will be faith-filled. I'm telling you, there is nothing more powerful on planet Earth than prayer. You can, before we go preach, before we play our songs, before we do our outreaches, we must bathe it in prayer if we want to be effective. I was told a long time ago, Randy, never by those two, by those two redhead ladies in the Moo Moos, they are twins, kind of off the rocker a little bit, but they said this to me. They said, never take on, never take on more than you can bathe in prayer. Just say no, don't do it. Because it won't work, it won't be effective, and it won't glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. Prayer. Thou hast heard the desire of the humble. He hears who? The humble. And will prepare their hearts. Thou will cause thy, thy, thy ear to hear. Look at Psalm 143.11. And can I have the New King James, please? Do you have that translation there, uh, Daniel? Psalm 143.11, New King James says what? No, I guess you don't have it. Do you have New King James, Daniel? Yes, you do. Thank you. Go ahead. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In your faithfulness answer me, and in your righteousness. Wow. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplication. In your faithfulness answer me, and in your righteousness. That's a humble prayer. That, I said, that's a humble prayer. You know, I was thinking, last night, the funniest thing happened to me. 11.30, 12 midnight, whatever it was at my desk, and that's my best time on Saturday night because I, I, I really get in tune and no interruptions. And, and what came to me? A Sunday school song. I couldn't figure out, what, what, what am I singing here? Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. I know it's not politically correct. He climbed up in a sycamore tree to see what he could see. And the Lord came along and said, Zacchaeus, you come down from there today. I'm, go I'm going to your house today. I'm going to your house today. Now, why am I? Can you imagine me at 1130 and I singing this little song? I'm going, I've lost it. Where's the NyQuil? Give me. And, and all of a sudden it came to me by the Holy Spirit. It's when Zacchaeus came down from his lofty place. When he humbled himself, it means to get down. Remember? And when he got down out of that tree, salvation came to his house. Isn't that something? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zacchaeus was a wee little Boy, I get in trouble for that by the ACLU, and I, wee little man, you don't say that no more. What? Look at Luke 11, verse 1 and 2, talking about prayer, the power of prayer to bring revival, to bring fire, to bring restoration. I mean, the, pro, the, the, the psalmist cried out, send prosperity now. There was a difficult time he was going through. He cried out, send prosperity now. Re revive prosperity. Reprosper me now. That's fine to say that. 
Lift your hands right now. Let's pray. Let's pray that. The psalmist prayed it. Come on, let's pray it. Lord, send prosperity now in Jesus' name. You just prayed what the psalmist prayed, a biblical prayer. Hmm? You can expect that to happen if you believe it. Amen. And prosperity means more than just money, sir. How about your health to prosper? How about your children to prosper? How about your business to prosper? Your homes to prosper? Your church to prosper? I want our lives to prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Now look at Luke. Look at Luke 11, 1 and 2. Luke 11, 1 and 2. And it came to pass that he was, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Here, here, just hold on a second. Here, the disciples came and said, teach us to pray. Man, that's another thing we need to be praying. Lord, teach your people to pray. Amen. Teach us to pray spirit-led prayers. That according to your will, it will be done. Man, I pray that all the time. But Lord, teach me to pray. Show me what to pray for. Holy Spirit, lead it. Reveal it. Because when we pray those kind of prayers, praying in the Spirit, they're answered. Powerful things happen. Mighty things happen. Hallelujah. That's why I keep promoting praying the Word, praying the Scripture, because the Scripture is the will of God. And when you pray the scripture, you'll have what you ask of him. Hallelujah. Now, look, uh, look at verse 2. Verse 2, the disciples say, teach us to pray. That should be the church's cry, even today. Teach us to pray. Pray for revival. Pray for a return to you, O Lord. Go ahead. And he said unto them, when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Amen. How does God's will get done on earth? Only one way. Prayer. He told us to pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we all want God's will done. Lord, let your will be done in our lives, in the church, in our country, in the schoolhouse, in the White House, in the Congress. Let, let your will be done. Is that a fair prayer to pray? We want your will, your way, your direction. Then we'll prosper. Then we'll succeed. Then we'll be protected. Then no nation will dare bring a railing against us. Hallelujah. One nation under God. I still believe that. Stupid me. One nation under, say it with me. One nation under God. How blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord. Whoa. Oh, hallelujah. Now look, now look. It says that God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven already when we pray. That's powerful. If we want to get things done on earth for God, God's way, for his glory, then we've got to pray. Jesus prayed from the cradle to the grave. How much more should we pray? When one occasion he gets up early in the morning before it was uh, light, and goes to a solitary place to pray. This is Jesus. No wonder he walked on water, caused blind eyes to see, demons fled. He was totally connected to his Father. See, that's what prayer does for you. It connects you and makes and deepens your relationship with the Father when you pray. It's called communication. I don't need Dr. Phil to tell me that. You converse, you talk. You talk to him, he talks to you. Call upon me and I will answer you and show thee great and mighty things you know not of. Try it sometimes. Try making prayer your first priority, not your last resort. Uh-oh. Hallelujah. It's powerful. It's effective. <clears throat> it says, pray, thy kingdom come. Now, this means more than just the literal kingdom of God being established on earth during the millennium. I know that. But there's another side to the coin, and that's the spiritual kingdom. And where does the spiritual kingdom dwell? Inside you. 
And where the kingdom is, there also is the king ruling and reigning. So it's saying pray that the kingdom of God would come into the hearts of people everywhere. Family, friends, loved ones that don't know Jesus. Pray thy kingdom come into their hearts. In Jesus' name. You know, they say one of four out of five people on planet Earth are not saved, not born again. Four out of five. That's a lot of people. I mean, I know that. Hmm? There's plenty of, that's why Jesus said in the last days, the fields are ripe. The fields are ripe for harvest, but the workers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send revival workers into the fields to harvest souls. I'm reminded of something powerful. <sighs> Remember Elijah when he was up on Mount Carmel? And he was faith. So this was a time where there was drought. This was a time where the people of God had turned from the living God to idols, to the God of Baal because of Jezebel's influence. So they had left the Lord and now were indulging in all kinds of crazy things and idolatry and sexual perversion and all kinds of things. God sent a prophet, a voice in the wilderness. And he came with a message for the king, Ahab. And it was a strong message. And remember, he gave it then took his flight. But there was a time when there was an engagement, a confrontation, that all the prophets, the demonized prophets of Baal were, were brought together, 400, and 300 prophets of Asherah, 700 demonic prophets up on Mount Carmel against the prophet of God, Elijah. But wait a minute, if God be for me, who can be against me? And they had a sacrifice. They had a little something going on there. They took a bullocks, and they butchered it, put it on the sacrifice, two of them, one for Elijah, one for the prophets of Baal. And they said, okay, call upon your God. And the one that brings fire to burn up the sacrifice, he is God. You know the story. So the demonized prophets get up there, and they start yelling and screaming and chanting and dancing and, and, and cutting themselves. And that's why when you hear your kids or the kids at school cutting themselves, it is demonic. And it needs to be dealt with. And there is freedom and deliverance from that, by the way. Now, they begin to cut themselves thinking that would re bring a response from the God and nothing happens. Here comes the man of God. He gets up. He walks to the center next to the sacrifice, and he prays. Lord! Actually, what he was praying was, Revival! And fire came down and burned up the sacrifice and burned up the water and burned up the rocks. And here's the revival part. The people of God that turned away from God fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. There was revival in the nation because of prayer. Yeah, somebody say, the Lord, he is God. And there was revival in the nation. And then I dreamed for a minute. An impossible dream. But is it impossible with God for one person to stand up in the Senate and say, Revival! Fire! And all the senators drop to their knees and drop to the floor saying, The Lord, He is God! The Lord, He is God! Wow. Wouldn't that be something? And how about it happening in the churches? And how about it happening in the schoolhouse? The Lord, He is God! Hallelujah. Whew. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad you came? You can see I'm fired up for revival. And it's going to begin in the house of God. Where did Jesus go when he needed to clean house? He went to the temple. 
with his whip. He didn't go to the council meeting or the senate meeting. He went to the church, started there, got it straightened out. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody give me a wave right now. Wave to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, let's go back and see key number three. So we humble ourselves, key one. We pray. Pray for revival. Pray for fire. Pray for a renewal. Pray for a broken and contrite spirit in each one of us. That God would renew a steadfast spirit in us. Come on. And then key number three is what? And pray and seek my face. God is saying, church, seek my face again. Now, why is this so important? Let's define it. Okay. The word seek means to strive, to desire, to keep after. The word face means presence or person of. Presence or person of. So God is saying, seek my face. He's saying, strive, desire, keep after my presence, my person. He's saying, come back and seek my face. Now, I've told you this before, that seeking his face and seeking his hand is two different things. Seeking his face is speaking of his person. It speaks of uh, worship. That's what worship is all about. You seek his face, right? Worship isn't about asking, gimme, gimme, gimme. Worship is giving him adoration, giving him praise, giving him glory, singing to him, right? So worship, he, what's, what's he saying here? He's saying, seek my face. Worship me again. But wait, we worship. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He's saying, I'm looking for true worshipers. Not any worshiper, but a true worshiper who will worship me in spirit and truth. Jesus said, very, Jesus talked to religious people and said, with your lips, you praise me. But your hearts are far from me. You're saying all the right stuff. You got all the cliches right. Jesus, God, pulpit, Bible, hanky. You're, you're saying all the right stuff, and your lips are doing it right, but your heart's funky. Your heart's, your heart is far from me. He said, I'm looking for true, in John chapter 4, I'm looking for true worshipers who worship me in spirit and in truth. In spirit, in the Holy Ghost, in truth, according to the word of God. He's saying, seek my face. True worshipers, come back to true worship. Stop with the 10 minutes and it's over. If you go past, what's going on? I can tell when we need revival. I can tell when people need revival. It's because after a dynamic service and we went a little long and 20-some people got saved and 54 baptisms, all they want to say on the way out is, you went a little long, didn't you, Pastor? We need revival. I'm willing to stay all day for See 54 people baptized and a dozen people get saved. Denny's isn't that more important to me. Cancel the reservation. I'm in the house of God. Oh, people get mad now. Pastor, why are you talking like this on back to church? You ain't going to get nobody back to church like that. Oh, yeah, I am. You're going to get a fire in them. You're going to get a fire in your belly, living water in your belly. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody praise God in here right now. Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about? I, I need someone. I need someone to help me here. Who wants to help me? No, no, no. I don't need. I want. Here, you. You. Come here. Get up here. Please. Come on up here. Seeking his face means seeking his person. Seeking his hand is seeking his supply. Are you with me? From his hand, we receive miracles, signs, and wonders, and supply. So when you petition, Lord, I need help, Lord, this, you're, you're seeking his hand. But how many know once in a while he wants you to seek his face? He wants you to come in his presence with thanksgiving and praise. He wants you to look at him face to face like like Moses did, and just adore him. Why can't we just say, I love you, Jesus, once in a while? 
You know, I don't have a problem with saying I need help. My bills are more than what's coming in, and my child is sick. I don't have a problem with all that. He says, do it. Bring your, make your petitions known unto God. But we need to come before him with adoration and love. We, need to tell, we just need to boast on him for a while and tell everybody how beautiful he is, how wonderful he is. He is my Jesus. He is my king. Is he your king? Hallelujah. So seeking, put your hands out. Seeking his hands is coming before him like this. Would you go to somebody's house knowing that they were going to give you something going in there like this? Put him on four. Going like this. Well, I'm here. How you doing? You doing okay? You're okay. No. You would come in like this, talking to her like this. Hey, hey, thanks for helping me out today. You're, you know, you're just wonderful. I know you love the Lord. and Thanks for helping me. And then the hand comes out and you receive. Are you with me? Now, here, seek mine. Here. No, no. You're, you're, you're the one that needs something. Yeah. You're going to come and seek my hand. Look down here. Then you're seeking. And what Jesus is saying, look down. Don't look at me. What are you looking at me for? Look at my hand. In my hand is what you want. It's blessing. It's goodness. It's supply. It's all those things. But you come, and every once in a while, he wants to do this. Come on. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Seek my face. Seek my face. Thanks. Worship me. Somebody seek his face right now. Somebody worship God right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo. Wow. Did you all get that? Let's seek his face. We come here on Sundays to seek his face. Even with problems we might have, we'll get to the hand later. We want to seek his face. Let me tell you something. Time and time again in the Bible, when those like the leper, the woman with the issue, um, uh, there was the uh, Canaanite woman whose daughter was possessed. When they came, read it careful. They came and fell at his feet and worshipped him. And then they petitioned him. When worship precedes petition, miracles flow. When you get to the place where worship becomes him, Jesus, because more important than any problem you're going through, all your problems will be resolved by his hand. Seek his face. The psalmist was on the run. Everybody wanted to kill him. And he's dodging spears. He's, he needs weapons. He's got a ragtag band of thieves. And, and, and finally, he starts crying out to God, I need this. Help me. I'm, they're going to kill me. And God says, shh. David, seek my face. And he says, wait a minute, but I need to, shh, seek my face. And all of a sudden, David, something came over him. And the Bible says, from his heart, from his heart, it says, your face, Lord, I will seek. All of a sudden, God became more important to him than his problems. Now, back to, uh, I got to finish quick. Back to our text, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. Here's key number four. Then uh, it says, and pray, so humble yourself, pray, seek his face. Let's get back to true worship and turn from their wicked ways. Now, this is tricky. Turn from their wicked ways. And I know most people will begin reading off a list of what America's done wrong, this and that, pornography, all these things. But wait a minute. It starts in the house of God. We just talked about those things that he chastised us about. This is what he's talking about, I believe, utmost and foremost when he says and turn from their wicked ways what wicked ways the ways of pride the ways of prayerlessness the ways of vain worship it means to repent to change your mind about it worship isn't about me it isn't about you it's about jesus worship isn't about a spotlight it isn't about Blaring electric guitars, although I love them. But it's not about that. The focus is Jesus. I said the focus is Jesus. And Jesus alone. Worship the Lord thy God and serve him only. 
And when we do that, when we turn from that, when we get back to doing what we need to do, and that's praying with the right attitude, praying in the spirit, praying in faith, praying with a humble heart, humbling ourselves before God. You know what that word humble means? It's treating each other better than you would treat yourself. A humble heart gives the better coat, not the ragtag one. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. It's a call to repentance, to turn from pride, prayerlessness, and vain worship. Stand on your feet, please. As a result, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sins. Then I will heal their land. We're going to pray right now as the band comes up. Are you glad you came to church? <laughs> I don't, that was four of you. What about the rest of you? <laughs> That's all right. It'll soak in. Man, I want to get you fired up for God again. That's what I want. I want you seeking his face. I want true worship in spirit and truth. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to ask you, bow your heads with me. Who needs to get back into a right relationship with Jesus Christ? Come on, raise your hand right now. Who needs to get back in the right relationship with Jesus Christ? Come on. We all fall down. We all drift away. That's what this message is all about. We need to return. We need to be revived. I want to pray for, you, for those of you right now. Maybe somebody here needs to receive Jesus for the very first time. Is there somebody here that would say, Pastor, I need to open my heart to Jesus and ask him to come in and change me and help me. People that are iffy about Jesus, I, I just ask them, well, how's your life going? Not very good. It's all messed up. I'm strung out. I'm, I'm all over the place. Well, how's that working for you then? Not very good. Well, listen, taste of the Lord and see that he is good. Try Jesus. He's real. He's effective. And he loves you without condition. Is there somebody here? I'm going to pray for those that raised their hand that needs to be revived. Or just be in, get back in a right relationship with Jesus Christ. But who here, and wave it real good so I can see you. Who here would say, I need to accept Christ into my heart today? Raise your hand. Just raise and wave it. Are you waving your hand, sir? Somebody else? One way to revival is just to pray. To get in a right relationship with Jesus Christ is to admit it that you've missed the mark and that forgiveness is given and restoration is given by the Lord. Come on, let's pray out loud. Lord Jesus, forgive me my shortcomings, my neglect, my pride-filled attitude once in a while. <laughs> My neglect of prayer. I will seek your face. I will praise my God. I will not be ashamed. In Jesus' name. I confess with my mouth. Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in my heart. God raised him from the dead. God raised him from the dead. Now I know I'm restored. Now I know, now I'm, I know restored. I'm saved. Now I know, now I'm, I know saved. I'm revived. Now I know in I'm Jesus' revived. name. In Jesus amen name. and amen. Somebody clap right now. I want to close with happy day. You know why I want to close with happy day? Somebody got saved. Amen. Happy day. Everything you got, brother. Come on. One, two, three. Thank you. The greatest day in history Death is beat and you have rescued me Sing it out, Jesus is alive The empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won the day Shout it out, Jesus is alive 
is alive, singing and oh, happy day, happy day, you've washed my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, oh, happy day, happy day, you've washed my sin away, oh, happy day. Joy and perfect peace Earthly pain finally will cease Celebrate Jesus is alive He's alive And oh, happy day, happy day You've washed my sin away Oh, happy day, happy day I'll never be the same oh,